Wendy has over 15 years working with seniors and their families in resolving issues of elder financial abuse, fraud, caregiver malfeasance, and insurance reimbursement. Wendy, why are seniors so vulnerable to abuse? There are a few reasons um, that I've encountered in my experience. Uh, seniors can be too trusting of authority figures, uh, doctors, caregivers, and even their spouses. Um, many seniors live alone. Uh, their family is located far away, so there's no one to really monitor the daily activities. Uh, those seniors at risk uh, with uh, disabilities, such as dementia, hearing loss, blindness, and uh, there are no family or friends involved at all in their lives. And predators take advantage of that loneliness mm -hmm. and worm their way into the seniors lives. Yeah, I, I can see that definitely being scary for people. In your experience working with seniors, who have you found to be the most common perpetrators? Well, statistically, they say the most common perpetrators generally of any abuse are family members. Mm -hmm. In my experience, though, uh, I've been called in when it's been caregiver abuse. Just to give you a few examples, uh, one caregiver embezzled $25,000 from uh, her senior client and put all that cash under the caregiver's bed. So it was easy to find. Uh, in another case, a caregiver stole a senior cell phone and incurred over $2,000 worth of cell phone charges. Uh, in another case, this, uh, a caregiver asked for an advance in pay, got the pay, and skipped town. Wow. So uh, usually, unfortunately, I'm brought in in situations that have already occurred, and I need to clean them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. So who can be enlisted to help? Well, ideally, it's uh, trusted family members or maybe close friends, but many times they're just not available. They don't live nearby or they are too busy with work and personal lives. Uh, so in that case, uh, the family could hire a geriatric care manager who is a social worker. Uh, and that person has expertise in navigating through all the government bureaucracies and agencies and can refer the family to many different resources and also set up a, a caregiving plan. Um, but uh, you can also go to your social services agency in the county and they have social workers also. However, with all the budget cutbacks, you're not going to get the fast service as you would with a private care manager. Then you have accountants. You could uh, talk with the family accountant or CPA. If they have time, they, they may able, be able to help or refer uh, you to other people such as professional bill payers, people who monitor financial activity. And uh, finally, there are fiduciaries. Uh, who are individuals who manage the property assets and money of an individual and they must be licensed by the state. Mm -hmm. well, great. So what can be done to prevent abuse? The first thing you need to do is scrutinize all financial records. This would include bank account statements, credit card statements, investment account statements, Make sure that there's no fraud going on. Uh, then uh, you need to uh, make sure you check the backgrounds thoroughly, diligently, of anyone who might be providing service to your senior. Uh, that would be a contractor, a window washer, a caregiver, anyone who's involved in their lives and may take advantage of that. Who should be monitoring these people? Well, ideally, once again, family members should be doing that okay. uh, because sometimes the senior just doesn't have the wherewithal anymore to follow through and to focus. Um, but if the family member is not available, then 
you would go to the people we just talked about, mm -hmm. like geriatric care managers, professional bill payers, um, other people could step in and do that type of thing. I've seen situations where adult children are in denial that mom or dad is in need of extra help, and they've always been so independent and all that, so it's, it's a struggle for them to kind of come in and, and start to control a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so what would you recommend for adult children in that situation? Well, it is difficult for a senior or for any of us to give up our independence. And part of that is the financial independence, mm -hmm. taking care of our own finances. Uh, you have to be, as an adult child, nosy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can do this surreptitiously. Other times you may have to sit down with your senior parent and have a talk about your concerns that maybe uh, too much money is being spent on one thing or another, or maybe something's missing, some money, some valuables, and tell them your concern. Um, but some ways to identify that things are not exactly right is if you walk into the home and mail's piling up or mail is strewn throughout the household. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not being taken care of. Um, you may find termination notices for utilities, such as the telephone, the gas, electric. Obviously, again, the bills aren't being paid. Um, you need to review uh, checks that have been written and credit card statements to see what purchases are being made. Uh, sometimes you may see that some of the purchases are sort of out of line with what the senior normally would uh, buy. And this could be uh, in indicative of either the senior having some personality changes or dementia, or there could be fraud involved from another person. Check for valuables, uh, such as jewelry. Make sure that everything's in its place, and actually you should put valuables in a uh, safe. If it's in the home, make sure the safe is attached to the wall or a safe deposit box at the bank. Uh, also, check that checkbook regularly. Make sure all the check numbers are accounted for. And take a look at what's being spent on donations to charities and money for magazine subscriptions. Um, if there is a lot of that going on, then there's a problem. Seniors just can't say no to anything that comes through the mail, asking for donations or requests by telemarketers. Mm -hmm. And so you need to really check on that and sit down with your senior as far as donations go and say, okay, what, what's really important to you as far as charity or charities? And that we'll make a donation once a year and set an amount for that donation. And as far as magazine subscriptions go, um, as you know, once you subscribe, they keep sending you renewal notices even though the subscription isn't up for renewal. And I've had clients before I came on board who had 10 or 15 years worth of a subscription for our magazine because they just kept paying mm -hmm. those notices. So uh, those are some indications that some help is going to be needed. Okay. So you, you've talked about caregivers being um, one of the number one perpetrators in your experience. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us why it's important to work with a professional who's licensed, insured, with an agency versus somebody who might be just independent on Craigslist or on the internet? Well, in either case, you do need to still do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. uh, with an agency, hopefully, it's not always the case, but hopefully, that agency has done thorough background checks on its caregivers. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you should ask the agency how they conduct those background checks. Um, also, they should be able to provide you with a certificate of liability insurance so that you know that they are insured in case there's some caregiver malfeasance. And then a caregiving agency will be reporting the income for the caregiver, withholding the taxes, Social Security, and that type of thing. If you hire an independent caregiver, the IRS may, be, may consider that person as an employee. 
and the senior parent considered as the employer. And then the parent has to do all the reporting to the government. Now, uh, usually a CPA or accountant can help with that, but that's just an extra stress sometimes on the family and on the senior. So that would that's one reason to go with an agency is they do all the reporting. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, and workers' comp also. Yes, workers' comp, all, all that type yeah. of thing. You don't have to worry about right. that. What are some ways to prevent abuse from hired contractors? Well, uh, you should only use licensed contractors, and you can go to the California State Contractors Board to find out if the contractor is licensed, um, if that contractor is insured, and if they have any claims against them. And you can either call the board or you can go online and get that information. Um, when you uh, hire a contractor, actually you should get three bids for the job and then uh, review the references for those contractors and also make sure there is a written agreement for the work. Um, you should only pay up front 10% of the total cost of the job or $1,000, whichever is less. And then finally, when the work is completed, you should inspect that work thoroughly and don't pay the balance until you are satisfied with the work. I think that's great advice. For I wish, anyone. <laughs> I know. I wish I would have done that a long time ago. I hired a contractor and he was not like, he, I'm sorry, he was not insured. Mm -hmm. And he caused damage to uh, my unit as well as three other units. Um, and my homeowner's insurance had to pay for all the damages and it cost $100,000. Oh, and goodness. so now I will always take that advice. <laughs> But it's sometimes you take somebody's referral and you yes. think, oh, they're the, they're the nicest person. I trust them, and you just really need to. Be Even careful. if a friend refers you to any service, whether it's a caregiver or a contractor, always do your own due diligence. Don't rely yeah. on on just a friend's referral or you know somebody that you might know. Just do your own work on that. Your own background check. What are some steps that can be taken to start monitoring? Well, as we mentioned, uh, on a monthly basis, you should review all the financial statements. You should balance a check, the checkbook, at least on a monthly basis. Open mail, review bills that have come in. Um, ask for a credit report from all the three different credit reporting agencies. You are entitled to a free credit report once a year from each agency. And um, if you don't want to go through all three agencies, which are Equifax and TransUnion and Experian, you can go to annualcreditreport.com. That website will do it all for you. So monitor the, the activity on your uh, seniors' credit reports. And then uh, enroll them in a credit protection program. Uh, one that not only monitors the credit activity, but prevents a criminal from using personal information to open up accounts, whether they are other banking accounts or credit card accounts. Okay. What are some red flags to look for with caregivers? If a caregiver asks for a loan of money or property, if they ask the senior to purchase items for them, uh, if they ask for an advance in pay, or, or if they ask for credit card, debit card, or bank information, those are sure warning signs, and that caregiver should be fired immediately. The caregiver should never have access to credit cards, debit cards, or checks. And uh, you can set up a petty cash system with maybe two or three hundred dollars in the cash box. And in my book, The Tarnished Golden Years, I explain how to set up that very simple system and how to track uh, the receipts. Great. What are some other preventative measures that seniors should be aware of? One of the most important things, I don't think people think about this very often, is purchase a mailbox that can be locked. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client who went was away for about a two-week vacation, and when she came back, she found that much of her mail had been stolen. And the thief, 
had stolen a uh, credit card statement and within that statement, as you might be aware, the credit card companies send blank checks that you can write against the card. And that's what the thief did in the amount of several thousand dollars. So make sure you have a locked mailbox. No matter how secure you think your neighborhood is, it is not. Uh, if you have documents that need to be discarded, uh, make sure that any of those that have personal information, social security numbers, and uh, account numbers are shredded. And you can have a shredding company come to your home and they will do the shredding on site, or you can take it to, or they will pick it up and take it to their facility. Um, that's if you have a lot of shredding. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it'd be a good investment to buy a small shredder for your, for your home. Don't give telemarketers any information. Don't conduct any business over the phone that you have not initiated. Mm -hmm. Tell the telemarketer uh, to take you off their call list and hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. That's easier said than done with seniors. Um, and most important, be aware of the people who are involved in your seniors' lives. Um, a new best friend or an attentive banker may not have the best interest of your senior at heart. I agree. <laughs> so if I were to suspect elder abuse, whom should I notify? Well, you should notify Adult Protective Services, which is part of your county social services agency, and also the local police department. Uh, people who uh, report abuse in California are shielded from civil and criminal liability. So even if you don't really have any concrete information, it's always worthwhile to at least report it and then the authorities can investigate it and um, put the abuser on notice mm -hmm. that this is being investigated. Abuse sometimes is very difficult to prove uh, many times the a senior will have willingly written a check to the abuser or willingly given that abuser valuables such as jewelry or other items. Also the senior could be suffering from dementia and cannot, cannot remember exactly uh, what happened. Many times the district attorney's office will not press charges because the district attorney's office just has bigger fish to fry, and they're not going to pursue a uh, small time uh, criminal activity that really maybe they can't they can't prove. So basically, what I'm taking from everything that we've talked about today is always be involved, pay attention, even if them if you aren't able to find somebody that can, so, someone such as Wendy with Have Pen Will Travel or a CPA, a professional fiduciary, somebody that's licensed that is not going to end up being a perpetrator. <laughs> and just pay attention, be, be very aware of what's going on. Is, is mom or dad losing uh, the ability to remember things or, or make wise choices with their money? And just uh, for advice to the general public, if you see anyone in a grocery store, for example, who acts confused, uh, has trouble writing out a check, uh, looks, uh, has a disheveled appearance, call someone. Mm -hmm. Call the local police and say, I think this person needs help. We're, I think we all have to be aware of it. Absolutely. I think that's great advice. I know with children, there's anyone who works for a school district or or doing child care, they are mandatory reporters. Do they have that for seniors? Yes, there are mandatory reporters. Uh, doctors, for example, any health care worker, anyone who has responsibility to take care of a senior, mm -hmm. they are mandated by law to report. But once again, we should all be aware of people in our community. Absolutely. Well, if you would like more information about Wendy or Have Pen Will Travel, all of her contact information is on our Elder Care channel, and she can be reached directly at 510-333-0573, and Wendy would gladly walk you through any problems that you might be having. We thank you so much for visiting the Elder Care channel. Thank you, Wendy, for your expertise. It's been a pleasure. 
and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Stephanie.